guys, Boxing Gossip here. One of the topics we discussed in brief in the podcast last night was Billy Joe Saunders' career and whether or not uh, he should stick with Frank Warren as a promoter, someone to guide his career, or whether he should consider pastures new. Now, it was a topic that received a lot of interest, but you know there was a huge amount to discuss on the podcast last night, so it wasn't one that we could necessarily go into in full detail. Um, I wanted to do a separate video, more to get my own personal thoughts across on the subject. Let me start by saying, historically, I think Frank Warren has actually done a pretty good job in building Billy Joe Saunders. Frank Warren signed Billy Joe Saunders as a young Olympian. Uh, Saunders made his professional debut in 2009. And I actually think, if you like, Frank Warren guided Billy Joe Saunders the old-fashioned way in terms of building his career. In his 11th fight, he fought for the Southern Area title. Um, moving on to his 13th fight, he fought for the Commonwealth title. Um, he stepped up to fight for the British title against Nick Blackwell in his 16th fight. And we saw him get a succession of increasingly strong opponents and you know, really build up his career pretty nicely. Uh, as I've alluded to, Nick Blackwell was his 16th fight, and we then saw you know, relatively decent domestic names, Matthew Hall, Spike O'Sullivan, John Ryder, the undefeated Emmanuel Blandamora, um, before the undefeated at the time Chris Eubank Jr., uh, which was for the uh, EBU, as well as the, uh, the British and the Commonwealth titles. Um, in fact, going into that Eubank fight, one of the reasons that I picked Billy Joe Saunders um, to win that fight, and one of the reasons that I believe he did win the fight was the experience that he'd gained through his career. You know, he'd been battle tested. He'd done tough twelve rounders against John Ryder, um, against Spike O'Sullivan. You know, whereas Eubank had maybe been messing around with a far lower level of opponent. But anyway, that's water under the bridge by now. Um, after that Eubank Junior fight, time was wasted chasing a rematch with Chris Eubank Junior. Um, Kind of a bizarre situation where, in my opinion, Saunders, well, not in my opinion, factually, Saunders was the victor in that matchup. But it seemed that Eubank Jr. was able to dominate and dictate, you know, the terms for the rematch and, and really mess Saunders around. Um, he took a warm up fight before fighting Andy Lee for the middleweight title. And really, it's since that win over Andy Lee that things have really spiralled out of control for Billy Joe Saunders. Saunders became the WBO World Middleweight Champion in December 2015, some 16 months ago from the recording of this video. Since then, at a time when he should be reaching his top potential in terms of level of opposition, in terms of earning potential, in terms of celebrity, um, it's actually worse than his career has stalled and stagnated. I think his career's actually gone backwards. I would say Billy Joe Saunders' name and profile is actually lower um, you know, than it has been. It's not that it's uh, just stayed on a par, it's actually decreased. Since that fight with Andy Lee, he's had one fight, Artur Akovov, some 12 months after. We've seen Billy Joe blow up in weight outside the ring. We've seen him carry injuries. There's rumours that he's been up to 15 stone between fights. Um, and the performance against Akovov was, was woeful and one could argue he was actually relatively lucky to escape that fight with his unbeaten resume um, still intact. It was a, a very, very disappointing performance. But here we are today, April 2017, and it's not too late for Billy Joe Saunders. He's only 27 years old, he's undefeated, despite the fact his career seems to have stalled, he still retains some good name value, you know, he's still a a relatively well regarded figure in boxing, possibly largely due to uh, his interviews with IFL TV where he's always come across as a controversial yet engaging character. Um, and you know, I don't think it's too late for Billy Joe Saunders. He's uh, recently started working with Adam Booth who is certainly a very, very big name trainer as a minimum and he's joined a lively sta stable of fighters who are working with Adam Booth. Um, but what we've seen Billy Joe do, really, is chase fights. We've seen Billy Joe chasing a Chris Eubank Jr. rematch. We've seen Billy Joe chasing a Gennady Golovkin fight. And it seems that these fights just aren't happening for him. Where we are today, 
you know, it's hard to see that that Gennady Golovkin fight is likely going to be next for Billy Joe Saunders. Um, you know, my perspective is that it appears Gennady Golovkin may be waiting to try and secure a fight with Canelo Alvarez. And, you know, really, Saunders potentially going to be left out in the cold. Um, Saunders is going to be inactive if he doesn't get a fight soon. Uh, and I think it's it's bad for all involved. It's obviously bad for Billy Joe Saunders. He's someone who needs to be kept relatively active due to the, the poor condition he uh, blows up to when he's not fighting. It's also really poor for, for Box Nation, for BT Sports and for Frank Warren because Saunders is the type of guy who should really be a talisman for that stable. He's a big personality. He's a very good fighter to watch. He's got very good wins on his resume and he's a world champion. Um, so, really, to have a guy like Billy Joe Saunders, who should really be the flag bearer for your organisation, to have him inactive and fat um, and languishing, chasing fights when he is a world champion, is, is just an all-round disaster for all involved, as far as I'm concerned. Now, the difficulty for Billy Joe Saunders, if we say that that Golovkin fight has gone, and, you know, maybe that Golovkin fight hasn't gone, well, let's, let's say for the purposes of this video that the Golovkin fight has gone for now. I don't particularly see that as a total negative for Billy Joe. Yes, it means he loses out on a big fight and a big payday, um, but Golovkin would be a substantial favourite in that matchup, and it may actually be better for Billy Joe to wait a year or two. After all, he's only 27 years old. Golovkin's in his mid-30s. Um, Golovkin's not going to be getting any better at this stage, and there's a, a high probability that he may actually start to feel the effects of AIDS, uh, certainly in the next 12 to 24 months. The timing may actually work out beneficial to Billy Joe to actually sit on that matchup and let it marinate uh, for a bit longer. Um, but that only works if he stays active, and that only works if he's able to get himself in meaningful fights uh, between now and then, where he can test himself, where he can improve, and where he can put that woeful performance um, against Akovov behind him and find him find the motivation to get himself in the gym and the question for me is at this stage can Frank Warren provide that for him and I I am unclear because whilst Frank has done an excellent job of feeding him domestic level names when he was a British Commonwealth European champion and of building him up what Frank Warren now needs to be providing for him are the more friends world level guys who are much more expensive to bring over. So specifically, I'm talking names like um, Gabriel Rosado. I mean, that would have been an absolute ideal fight for Billy Joe Saunders. Um, but it's a fight that they decided not to take, which seems, you know, really, really bizarre from my perspective. Um, but there's that Gabriel Rosado fight. Um, I know Rosado is now scheduled to fight Martin Murray, and I think that was a missed opportunity. I know Curtis Stevens has just suffered a big loss to David Lemieux, but that's certainly another name that I'd consider, and that's another name that I would throw into the mix. Um, you know, it's a guy with a high profile. It's a guy who is established, at least on a sort of top 15 world level basis. And it's, uh, it's a guy who's going to get Billy Joe Saunders at least motivated to, to get into the gym and hopefully build some hype and some credibility back to his name uh, before he steps up to face a guy like Gennady Golovkin. Put frankly, no pun intended given he's with Frank Warren, I don't believe Billy Joe Saunders would be in this situation if he were to be signed with Eddie Hearn. Now Eddie Hearn detractors um, will cite the Luis Ortiz example as a reason that Eddie Hearn is not always the right man to guide someone's career. And I completely agree. Eddie Hearn didn't do the best job with Luis Ortiz. And as you guys know, Luis Ortiz departed Eddie Hearn. Um, but when you have a domestic fighter, a domestic fighter aged only 27, and a domestic fighter already holding a version of the world championship in a glamour division, the middleweight division, I find it hard that Eddie Hearn would have allowed the inactivity um, that Billy Joe Saunders has suffered, only to bring him back against a guy like Arthur Akovov in a leisure centre in Paisley, Scotland. You know, I just don't see fighters like that. Um, you know, I, I don't see Eddie Hearn doing that to his fighters who are operating at that sort of level. If you look at the job that Eddie Hearn's done for fighters like Paul Smith, Martin Murray, Nathan Cleverley, you know, those sort of world title friends 
type guys who have maybe been in title fights or held versions of the title. If you look at the way he's been able to secure big fights for them time and time again, I kind of believe that's what Billy Joe Saunders needs. And I actually believe his upside is far higher than any of those guys. You know, Cleverly, Murray, uh, Paul Smith, Eddie Hearn's been able to get those fights. I believe he'd be able to get them for Billy Joe Saunders. And I believe Billy Joe Saunders would probably prove victorious because he is a a more elite boxer than the names I've mentioned. Now, I guess another difficulty is the nature of the middleweight division at present. You know, there are some big fights out there, but a lot of the big fighters are unavailable. You know, if Golovkin's unavailable to fight Canelo, presumably Canelo's unavailable to fight Golovkin. You know, they've got to decide whether they want to go back down the Eubank route again. Like, how many times have we heard there may be a rematch between Saunders Eubank? Will they or won't they, etc.? There's been talk about Billy Joe Saunders stepping up and campaigning at £168, uh, throwing his hat into the ring with the names like James DeGale, George Groves, Callum Smith. Let me say, personally, I believe that would be an absolute disaster for his career. Um, I believe Billy Joe, having seen him in person, having watched his fights where he's fought other middleweights, I don't believe he's a big middleweight. In fact, I believe he's a smaller than average middleweight. And I think stepping up to £168 when you've got guys like Callum Smith, you know, Rocky Fielding and George Groves, the guys of that sort of size, um, I think that would be a real, real, real bad decision from Billy Joe. Especially if you consider that he's the kind of guy who, you know, isn't the biggest puncher at 160. I also think for a guy who's shown a lack of discipline between fights, having that extra eight pound buffer to blow up between fights may not be a healthy thing for Billy Joe. He's the kind of guy who will take full advantage of that extra pound, extra eight pounds down the burger bar um, if we're, you know, if we can take past, past uh, behaviours uh, as an indicator for how he'll perform in future. All in all, I think Billy Joe Saunders needs to get himself in a, a meaningful fight soon. And I think if the Golovkin fight isn't getting signed or isn't going anywhere, I think we need to see a promoter, assuming that's Frank Warren being Billy Joe's you know, current promoter, to actually create a show around Billy Joe. You know, put some investment into your man. Have Billy Joe headlining a bill, maybe the Copper Box, maybe Wembley Arena, you know, somewhere in the London area, and bring in an opponent to fight him. Um, you know, it could be someone who's on the fringes of world level with that name credibility. You know, someone like a Curtis Stevens, someone like a, a Gabriel Rosado. I mean, let, let's pull up BoxRec now, and I'll try and see if I can give you more examples. I don't think he should go straight into a fight like... Um, Danny Jacobs or David Lemieux, but, you know, someone with a bit of name value. There's a Willie Monroe Jr., a Hassan and Dam and Jickham, um, Issei Smith, Sam Solomon, uh, Jorge Highland. You know, the names that are perhaps a little bit more known to the UK fans from, from previous fights and that sort of thing. I think that would be a, a, a real good thing. And I think um, it would be very good for Box Nation and BT Sports to have a guy like Billy Joe Saunders active. All in all, if I was Billy Joe Saunders, given the job Frank's done with him historically, and given the fact they've obviously got a good relationship, and Billy Joe's obviously a loyal type, I would suggest sticking with Frank Warren for now. But I would want to see a fight against one of those names, one of those top 20 marketable names, in London, with Billy Joe headlining, in the next three months. And I would want to use that kind of fight as a springboard to one of the very, very big matchups. And if Golovkin's unavailable, if Alvarez is unavailable, if the Eubank fight isn't happening, then you've got to take the fights to the more, um, you know, the, 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 the risky but still medium level rewards. So I'm talking the likes of Daniel Jacobs, I'm talking the likes of David Lemieux, you know, the fights that will cement Billy Joe right back as the number two man in the middleweight division should he be victorious. Um, if that cannot happen, you know, if uh, Billy Joe is appearing on some sort of undercard, or if Billy Joe is fighting against a guy that we haven't really heard of with no marketability like Arthur Akovov, then I think he really needs to be considering his options. Because I just don't think a guy like Eddie Hearn would necessarily guide Billy Joe Saunders' career this way. And I think if you look at Frank Warren's current world level champions um you know you've got terry flanagan i've discussed that extensively this week on the channel that i think his career has been very very poorly handled in terms of building him a name and building him a brand 
Um, you've got Billy Joe Saunders, who's hit absolute rock bottom in terms of his activity and in terms of his momentum. You've got a guy like Liam Wass, who's been knocking on the door for years and one maybe he should have had a chance a year ago. He's now got a chance against a guy who looks like a complete monster and he's you know a massive underdog. Um, you know, there, there, there's lots of question marks at present as to the pulling power of Frank Warren's stable, especially prior to the BT Sports deal, um, as to, to whether the funding is there and the, the public awareness is really there to bring these names over to the UK. And I think maybe Saunders would do well to give one more fight, see what is delivered for him in his next matchup. Uh, maybe he'd do well to give it another three months and see how the new BT Sports deal. Um, but if in three months' time he's fighting in an undercard or fighting someone of no name, then I think he's got to, you know, depart. And I think he's got to uh, work with Eddie Hearn or one of the other major promoters. Because he's 27. The best years of his career could still be ahead of him. Um, and if he can get momentum, if he can get activity, Billy Joe Saunders genuinely has the potential to have his profile multiplied by five and be involved in very, very big fights. Um, let me know your thoughts on this, people. What's your assessment of the whole situation? What do you make of the job Frank Warren has done for Billy Joe Saunders, both in the past and present? And if you were Billy Joe Saunders, would you be considering your opportunities in the sport right now? Leave your comments in the section below. Do let me know your thoughts. Always interested to discuss. If you've enjoyed the video, please take the time to hit the thumbs up button. And if you're new to the channel or you haven't done so before for whatever reason, do take the time to press subscribe so you can check out all of my other stuff. Many thanks indeed for watching.